It was the summer of 2016 in Erbil, a day, a day just like today in July, but so hot that a national holiday had been declared because it was just too hot to handle. I was standing with the first 40 students of Recoded. Recoded had, start, had started on that day with a mission to train youth how to code in places affected by war. But it just so happened that day that the generator in our training center had blown up and we were left with no electricity. So there I was, planning to teach coding skills with no power in an inglorious summer day. But that, mark, that day marked the start of a movement that is now growing strong, a movement that is creating the next generation of tech leaders. So you might be asking yourselves why this is important. We are at the beginning of a technological revolution that is fundamentally changing the way we live, work, and relate to one another. A revolution that has the potential to connect every human to the internet. A revolution that will bring unprecedented processing power, storage capacity, and access to knowledge. And these possibilities are being multiplied by emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, and 3D printing. But unlike previous industrial revolutions, this one is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. It is challenging our own understanding of what it means to be human. It is an exciting time to be alive because we will witness unprecedented disruption in almost every industry. And while this disruption will bring advances to our lives, it may also widen the gap between countries that have access to those technologies and talents and those who don't. This gap could leave scores of people outside of a movement that will inevitably shape our future. So it is fundamental that we start to think about those things here in Erbil and across the region. More than half the 369 million people living in the Middle East and North Africa today are under the age of 25. This is the highest proportion of youth in the world. This large young population presents a significant opportunity for a technological revolution. But one that has remained untapped so far, because this region has also the world's highest youth unemployment rates the lowest performance in sciences, and the lowest levels of English proficiency. This presents a serious problem, because as disruptive technology advances, the jobs that we have today will no longer exist tomorrow. And because of this, we have to start adapting our education models to ensure that the skills that we teach youth today will enable them to thrive in the future of work. Skills like social intelligence, technical ability, and creative intelligence will be so important in the future. So what are we doing to change this reality? What are we doing to make sure 
that the boys and girls of Erbil, Suleimania, Baghdad, Duhuk, are ready for the future of work. At Recoded, we believe that we have a responsibility to apply the learning science that we have today to the opportunities that tomorrow will bring. But we did not start Recoded just because we wanted to teach youth how to code and help them to find jobs. We did it because we believe that they can also become leaders in their communities. And this is the most powerful multiplier effect, the ripple effect. As the economy here and elsewhere starts to get back on their feet, we are training the next generation of tech leaders who will drive this country forward with the help of technology. One year in, and the founding mission of Recoded has never been more true and stronger. Since May 2017, we have launched three coding boot camps in Erbil, training almost 100 youth how to code. We have also doubled down on our commitment to grow the tech ecosystem in the Kurdistan region. We have brought dozens of technology enthusiasts for the first social innovation hackathon. We have brought coding training to refugee camps. We have started the first Google developer group in Erbil. We have organized two women in technology summits. And just a few weeks ago, we have started the first program to teach children how to code. Because coding is a fundamental skill alongside math and reading. And every child should have the opportunity to learn it. So here we are with that huge opportunity in our hands. But of course, to do what we do is not easy. And we do not do it, we do not do it alone. We're proud to have partners who believe in our mission and who are helping us to build this community. Since the beginning, we have worked with the German government through their development agency, GIZ, and with Zane Telecom. They believe, as we do, that by combining technology, entrepreneurship will help prepare youth to shape the next way forward. And this movement is also spreading to other parts of Iraq. In Basra, Nawar Zarif is leading the maker movement in Iraq. What he has achieved so far is incredible. From his home garage, he has created a 3D motion capture suit, which is a wearable device that captures human motions to control 3D animation. In Baghdad, Fikr Space and the station have built a community of developers and entrepreneurs. Together, these organizations are creating the first ripples of a tech ecosystem, one that has the potential to grow and sustain itself over the years. But for that to be possible, we just don't need skilled talents. We need also skilled leadership. So that's why I'm not here today to talk about how to teach youth to create technology. I'm here to tell you how to create the next generation of tech leaders. So I want to share with you some of the most important qualities a leader should have in the digital age. First, empathy. Empathy is the capacity to place oneself in another's position. It requires active listening and humility. And it is one of the most powerful skills a leader can have. Empathy goes well with a bias towards diversity. 
Diversity is beautiful. At Recoded, we were determined from the get-go to imprint on our DNA what now has become a core part of our mission, bridging the gender divide in technology. We're, we're proud to make our cohorts as gender-balanced as possible, with 40% female participation. And we also work with Syrians, Kurds, Iraqis, Iranians, Muslims, Christians, because we're all equal, and that's what makes us strong. Third, adaptability. Emotionally intelligent people recognize when to continue their course and when it's time to change it. We must be ready to deal with the unknown with dexterity and confidence. The world is changing fast, and we must act fast to adapt to it. Fourth, creative intelligence. Last year, in the same stage, Dr. Heman Latif from the American University in Suleimania talked about, yes, talked about how to teach creativity. Creativity is what sets us apart. And more automation will need more creative workers. And finally, a desire to help others succeed. Too often, we get self-absorbed with our own worries and concerns. And that's completely normal. But true leaders show an interest in success, not only for themselves, but also for others. And this behavior helps build powerful relationships and trust. The demographic dividend of young technolo technology leaders is immense, but we have to invest in their future. Imagine what each one of them is capable of. Imagine what each one of them can build together. Imagine the ripple effect of letting the young minds of this country dream. One tech leader in Erbil will inspire one tech leader in Mosul. One tech leader in Mosul will inspire one tech leader in Baghdad. One tech leader in Baghdad will inspire one tech leader in Suleimania. And the wave will not stop. In our office in Erbil, we have one wall with big black and blue letters. And it says, the best way to predict your future is to create it. The best way to predict your future is to create it. So when you go home today, think about how you want to create your future and join the next generation of tech leaders. Thank you.